Good evening folks, this is Jason Mutlak from StellarMate. Today we'll be talking about StellarMate app 2.4.0, which is coming with a host of new features and highlights. We are going to be mainly talking about the targets module. But before that, let's talk about the port selector tool, which is a new tool that, as the name suggests, enables you to select ports before you establish connection to your devices. So we have devices that have serial to USB connections and we can select which uh, port to designate to each device. Furthermore, we can select uh, and connect to networked devices that are connected to StellarMate either via Wi-Fi or Ethernet and specify the host name and IP address. For the serial ports, you can um, enter the serial port manually or select from the automatically detected ports by the system. And furthermore, you can also select the port rates as you see fit. And then you can you know, experiment with connecting and disconnecting each device individually. So this is a very handy tool to connect or to select the ports before you established your connection to your devices for the first time. Now let's go to the targets module. And so the targets module is the highlights for this version, and it is StellarMate app new planning tool. And as you can see, there is a lot to unpack, but as you get used to the interface, it becomes a little bit easy. Here we see the lunar and solar times. We can see the moonrise and moonset. Uh, for the sun, we see sunrise, sunset, and we also see the astronomical twilight time. This is when it gets really dark uh, when we talk about the, the twilight. And here you can see it's also the altitude versus time graph below. You see this transition from day to night. And so when it's truly really dark, this is when you should be imaging. So in my time, it's 1648. This is the this is the time. And then on the right side, we see um, our filters to select which type of objects we're interested to watch and also what is the general cardinal direction these objects should be uh, located. Then we have the sliders, including the minimum altitude in degrees. And this is also coupled with another parameter, which is the minimum duration in hours. So uh, an object must maintain 15 degrees above ground for at least one hour or more, as you specify. And as you play around with these parameters, you see that the object numbers here, now we have 18, gets changed as you play around with them. And this is all happen happens uh, uh, in real time as you change them. Next, we have the minimum FOV or field of view. This is in arc minutes, and this is only applicable for extended objects. So not for point sources, but for galaxies and nebulae that they have this information. And finally, we have the maximum magnitude of the object. So this is you select it as you see uh, fit. And the objects are automatically sorted by magnitude just to make uh, things easier for you as you search. So now let's uh, yeah let's move it to eight uh, magnitude and we can see immediately see that the number of galaxies available to us today dropped from 18 to three. And here we see uh, the, the list of available objects. And for each objects we have on the left side, the information and the rise time, the transit, uh, set time, magnitude, etc. Then we have the, the image and then um, the altitude versus time plot, which is exactly what you see in K stars. The yellow line indicates the time now. And then there is one more handy uh, uh, icon, which is the, you see the green arrow that indicates the object is rising now and red indicates its uh, setting. And if you see a yellow horizontal arrow, that means the object is currently transiting. Now, on the right-hand side, we can also see a few buttons, and these are the actions you can take on each object. So 
you can add objects to um, my favorites list. So you have here a list that you can create, edit, and delete. Uh, by default, we have a favorite list and we have my search uh, list. Uh, you can add to a new list or remove from a, uh, an existing list. And in the future, we, we're going to support even um, sharing lists. So now if we click on favorites, let's uh, for example, select and watch what we have in our favorites. So the objects that are here uh, are a flat list. They're not applicable. I mean, the search criteria is not applicable to them. It's whatever object in our stored list. And here we can see some nebulas and galaxies of all sorts. If we click on the X uh, um, button again, we go back to our regular search criteria. And so um, probably the main thing here is that um, this would allow us to go to each object and center it in our frame. And uh, this is now a good time to talk about the uh, field of view selector, but let me go ahead and first unpark my roll of doom and uh, my dust cap so we can start imaging. All right, so we're back and I just clicked go and solve to command my mount to go to the target, M31. And as you can see here, that the border around the target turns to magenta, which indicates that a go-to is in progress. Of course, you can go to the ECAS uh, tab to check for any progress there. Here we can see it's slowing, for example. You can also check the online modulo. And we can see that the targets modulo automatically started the align process because we selected go and solve. Now here you can see that the border turned to yellow, which indicates that uh, a capture and solve is in progress. So as you would normally expect, this would take a few, upper, a few iterations until it gets centered. So we'll be back in a bit. All right, so now we're almost done with our uh, go and solve operation. Here you can see the camera overlay uh, field of view indicator and uh, the rectangle is uh, green and the top is indicated by the orange line and so to start the framing assistant we simply click on the image itself and here we see some overlay information on the image indicating the orientation on the top right, uh, the field of view of the sensor itself on the top left, and the overall uh, image field of view on the bottom left. Here we can um, orient the target orientation, which is the blue rectangle, again with the top being the orange line until we get the desired rotation. Now, if we're doing manual rotation, you would simply go to your camera and try to rotate it counterclockwise by roughly 26 degrees. Then you come back here and you click rotate and capture, and then it would solve again and it would update the frame. And then your goal is just to bring this number down to zero. For automatic rotators, you don't really need to do anything. You simply select your orientation and then you click uh, rotate and capture and you just wait until the rotation is complete by your device and then um, here again we see magenta indicates motion after that it would run capture and solve there we go it's running right now and we should have actually an exact match if everything is correct and uh, running to plan. So the desired target orientation is negative 60 and our sensor is negative 60 east of north, an exact match with a zero angular offset. So that's a complete success. And we're done with our framing. I hope you guys found this video useful. Uh, we covered targets, uh, the framing assistant, and the port selector.
clear skies and good night.